Great news for manufacturing and our economy in general. The Ford Motor Company, celebrating 100 years in South Africa this year, is investing over 5 billion rand to build hybrid electric Ranger Buckies. The not so great news for climate conscious Bucky lovers in South Africa is that the vehicles will not be available locally yet. Let's get the details now from Neil Hill, president of the Ford Motor Company Africa. Neil, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, this is fantastic news. I've been wondering when the local car manufacturing um, fraternity will get it on the uh, electric bus. Talk to me about a plug-in hybrid electric Ford Ranger Bucky. What exactly is it? Because there's a lot of words there. Sally, good evening. Wonderful to be with you again. So the plug-in hybrid Ranger that we're going to be building in South Africa um, really consists of an internal combustion engine that then also has a battery pack that will allow the vehicle to operate in certain conditions under a full electric mode. So the engine actually deactivates and we the vehicle runs um, as it would with a, a full battery electric vehicle. So giving our customers the best of both worlds, a vehicle that um, still offers the performance and the drive that you're looking for uh, on the open road, but in the city and in areas where you're looking for um, a clean energy vehicle, it operates like a traditional electric or full electric vehicle. Very exciting times. Absolutely. When will the first one roll off the assembly line? So, Sally, they are due to roll off the assembly line in the middle of next year. Um, so that's something that we, we're very, very excited about. And, um, you know, you did mention initially that they're not going to be available in South Africa. The, the intention is to satisfy our export markets, which naturally are going to go um, to Europe and to Australia and New Zealand. But we are working to be able to support um, demand in South Africa in time to come as well. Is it going to be wildly more expensive than your, your typical Ford Ranger, Bucky? Is that what's the, the hold-up in South Africa? I mean, talk to me about the costs. So, Sally, there is definitely a cost penalty that comes with moving into hybrid and plug-in hybrid and full electric um, space. Um, so it won't be ex you know, dramatically more expensive than the range of vehicles that we're already selling in the range of lineup. Um, so that is one of the things that we're looking very carefully about is how to make it still affordable um, whilst offering customers the most important benefits. Typically in the past, we have seen cost penalties or premiums um, for a full battery uh, electric vehicle versus a normal internal combustion engine in the range of 55 to 60 percent. We are seeing these costs starting to come down as scale increases and also the competitiveness increases as well. Uh, and we believe that this will continue over time. Um, but the initial adoption rates are seeing some of those um, premiums that we were talking about. So I believe that uh, there's a government policy, which is the plan is to try and incentivize alternative energy vehicles in South Africa. And I believe that that is stuck somewhere. Where is it stuck? Why is it stuck? What is needed to get it unstuck? So, Sally, where it sits at the moment is in the hands of the DTIC and also with the Ministry of Finance. And it is really about taking the existing um, policy support that we have in the form of the Psalm 2035 document and amending it to incorporate the inclusion of new energy vehicles. We've been engaging quite extensively as an industry and also as OEMs with the both departments and, you know, we were hopeful that we would see something in the midterm budget speech, um, you know, coming out to, that happened on the 1st of um, November. Um, but the indications in that speech actually indicated that we'd see something in the February um, budget speech um, next year. So we really are, are hopeful that we will get this clarity and it will unlock the opportunities for the South African automotive industry to continue producing vehicles for export um, and also for local consumption and really supporting the very important manufacturing um, industry that we have in South Africa. So why is it stuck? Is it a money question? Is it because our uh, fiscus is so constrained, money is it's going to take a bit of money perhaps to get this, you know, to, 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 to roll out this incentive scheme? Uh, Sadie, it is a fiscus challenge um, and that's something that, you know, we've we've been 
very transparent in our engagements with the both departments. And it is about balancing the books and making sure that, you know, we don't, you know, add an additional burden to the South African economy and to the South African fiscus. Um, and it is about restructuring the policy. So that's really where we focus is in terms of how to balance these books and to, you know, to find a win-win situation between the public and the private sector. Um, but it is essential that we unlock this because the risk is that in South Africa, if we don't get policy certainty, we are going to end up in a situation where these decisions, the investment decisions, will start bypassing South Africa and we'll see a decline over time in the South African automotive industry as we continue to produce internal combustion engines only and not really tap into the bandwagon or, or the opportunity that new energy vehicles will present to the South African manufacturing industry and export opportunities. Yeah, I mean, it seems counterintuitive. We keep hearing investment, investment, investment. We need to up our manufacturing sector. And uh, this, this piece of legislation or whatever it is, this policy, is stuck. Is it just money creating the sticking point? Um, Sally, I must be honest, you know, in spite of our engagements, um, we do believe that it is just really the, the policy in terms of finalising it and the fiscus. We hope that it's nothing else. Um, you know, certainly based on the, con the conversations that we've been having, we've certainly got no indication that there's um, other fundamental issues that we are dealing with. Um, but we will continue our dialogue and our engagement both at an individual OEM level and also at an industry level um, to try and unlock this and make sure that we are able to progress it. Um, I think that there's a eagerness from all of the OEMs in South Africa to really tap into this and, and to make it an opportunity for us to move forward. Yeah. True reasons, we, we haven't seen exactly what the reasons are behind it. But we certainly um, are hopeful that we can unlock this and we can move forward. So th this is really wonderful news. So you're putting in uh, over five billion, I think 5.2 billion. The first of these hybrid vehicles will will be um, rolling off the assembly line in the middle of next year. Export market. Hopefully they're coming here. Um, You've got, Ford has got a hundred year history in South Africa and you've put in a lot of money into this country and it seems you remain committed. I want to ask you, how difficult is it to sell South Africa to your bosses um, when we look at the red tape and slow bureaucracy in South Africa, the vandalized pylons, which I think set you back quite a lot uh, earlier this year, the corruption, the crime, the infrastructure problems, how far away you are from the export market. How do you convince them that South Africa is still a great place to be? Sally, you list, you list a, a, an extensive list of challenges that we've been dealing with. Um, I think you know, the key thing that we keep on stressing is, first of all, how we leverage the advantages that South Africa has in terms of especially access to Europe with the European Free Trade Agreement. We know that, you know, certainly competitor markets like Thailand are also trying to get into that particular space. But I think the, the company's long-term commitment that we have to South Africa is really important to the company. And you talk about a 100-year history that we've had here. Um, also, it's about the difference we've made in people's lives in South Africa and the quality of the vehicles that we are able to produce here, which is certainly rivals other markets or other production sources in the world. Um, the list of challenges that you speak about is very real, and it is something that we as a company continue to engage with the government departments in terms of trying to overcome these challenges. It certainly is getting harder and harder. Um, you know, especially when you look at countries, you know, around the world that have efficient logistics systems, ports that operate, stable electricity supply, which fortunately we are seeing improvements in, but we're not there yet. Um, so certainly it does, it, it does present an incredible challenge. But I think the reputation and the longevity of our history in South Africa has continued to make this a destination mm. for investment that Ford Motor Company continues to believe in. And we continue to fly the flag as high as we can consistently. Well, thank you for that. And don't stop. Even though it's a harder and harder sell, there's clearly a really good relationship. And we do appreciate it. Some really great news. Neil Hill, president of the Ford Motor Company for Africa. Now, still to